really actually enjoy that. So, hey, if you are just joining us, my name is Dave and this is the YouTube Your Church Show. Um, this is the time where we get to help you YouTube your church. So why don't you uh, leave a comment right now in the comment section. Uh, just let us know where you're watching from or how often you watch YouTube. That is our question of the day. How often do you watch YouTube? I know for me, it's actually, it's actually quite a lot. I uh, watch YouTube several times a day um, and uh, I really because I really enjoy it and I also learn a heck of a lot as well so uh, make sure you let us know where are you watching from and how often do you watch YouTube uh, as I said if you're watching on my YouTube channel either today or later on in the week make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and leave a comment because I'll be going back and checking out everything well we have got a jam-packed show today. We're going to be covering a few things. I'm going to be going through the last five of the 10 commandments of YouTube. If you uh, didn't catch last week's episode, make sure you check it out. It's right here in the YouTube, uh, in the Facebook feed, but I'm also going to leave a link to it on my YouTube channel kind of up there somewhere. So it's somewhere around there. I'll leave a link to episode two. That's one through five of the 10 commandments of YouTube. And today we're going to be going through six through 10 of the 10 commandments of YouTube. Then as always, we're going to be taking your questions, whatever questions you have about YouTubing your church. I would love to be able to help as much as I can. And then I'm going to go through the channel of the week and the video of the week. And then I'm going to tell you what we're coming up next week. And I need to tell you, I am so looking forward to next week's episode because I'm going to be taking a deep dive into a really key aspect of all things YouTube. Okay, so, you know, as I said, today we're going through uh, six through 10 of the 10 commandments of YouTube. I started this series last week um, and, and I really enjoyed doing it. There were a lot of great comments in the comment section. If you're watching right now uh, and you'll you're want to get involved in this conversation, make sure you leave a comment. The comment section is happening I think it's right over there or over there. Uh, you, you'll work it out. Just leave a comment. Let us know where are you watching from and how often do you spend on YouTube? Okay, so I want to get straight into uh, numbers six through five, uh, six through ten of the YouTube Ten Commandments. So let's have a uh, before I get into the the next lot. Why don't I have a look at what we discussed last week? Last week we went through the first five, which is the first one was the cover image, that banner photo that goes across your YouTube channel and how you can optimize that. After that, we talked about channel tags, the importance of having tags on your channel. Uh, then we talked about video titles and how keyword titles are the most important thing when it comes to uploading your videos on YouTube. We also talked about some default tag uploads. These are the tags that get uploaded with your video by default. You can actually set them uh, in YouTube as soon as you start setting up your channel. That's a really great thing to do. And then we talked about the importance of channel descriptions, how they're keyword optimized as well, and what are some uh, best practices for getting the most out of your YouTube description. So today uh, I'm going to be covering six through 10. And I just want to jump straight in. Before I do, I want to say good day to Justin, Phil, Robbie, Jonathan, Sean, Kevin. You're all watching right now. I'm so glad that you are here with us for the YouTube at Your Church show. If you are just joining us, make sure you leave a comment. Tell me where you're watching from and how often you watch YouTube. Is it once a day? Is it twice a day? Is it four hours a day? Let me know how often you watch YouTube. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into uh, commandment number six. Commandment number six is all about video tags and the fact that we need specific video tags whenever we upload a video because tags actually help us be found on YouTube. That's where the algorithm kicks in. And if we've tagged the video correctly, then people will be able to access our uh, videos and find our videos and YouTube and Google actually start to recommend our videos for people when we tag them correctly. So video tags are super important. Now I want to show you a little bit what happens. This is a tool that I use called vidIQ that allows me to have a look at some video tags that are, uh, are exist on one of the videos that I created. And so this is a, a quick look at the video tags that I used for this specific video. If you want to find out more about vidIQ, uh, at the end of this, I'll post in the comment section. I will post a uh, link to how you can get free access to vidIQ, a, 
a free month trial or even a discounted rate. So I'll make sure I leave those in there. So video tags are super important because they describe what your video is about and let YouTube know uh, when people are looking for content, if your video fits that content. So every time you upload a video, you should have video tags. The videos need the, the tags need to be uh, related specifically to the video. If I'm doing drone footage of a, a beach somewhere in Australia, for example, I don't want to tag that with the words Bible study or anything along those lines because it doesn't really fit in with what I'm talking about. So um, you want to make sure that your video, your tags are video specific. And a key important thing here is that you want to make sure that you're also using long form key words, long or keywords with a very long tail. What this does is it means that your videos get niched down a little bit further. So if you're doing a video on uh, how to YouTube your church, I don't want to tag it with just the word YouTube or church. I want to make sure that I'm tagging it with a long form keyword tag, such as how to YouTube your church or how to get the most out of YouTube. So they're the sorts of things that I would tag and that's called a long tail keyword tag. So make sure you're using the maximum amount that you can use every time you upload. Make sure you use the maximum amount of tags. I, I think there's 500 characters that you can use. So make sure you're using all of those and make sure that they're niche down and they're very specific to your videos. So that's why uh, that commandment uh, video tags makes my top 10 of the YouTube video uh, commandments, YouTube commandments. Uh, if you are just joining us, I want to welcome you. This is the YouTube Your Church show, the show where we help you YouTube your church. And if you're just joining us, we're asking people to tell us where they're watching from and also to tell us how often you watch YouTube. How often do you watch YouTube every single day? That would be awesome. We're going through the 10 commandments of YouTubing your church. And number seven is playlists. So I want to talk about the importance of playlists. Now playlists need to be uh, put into your channel and a lot of people don't actually do this. They just upload their videos and they think that they've done enough but playlists allow you to organize all of your content and I want to show you really quickly some of the playlists that I have on my channel for example. Um, I've set them out in such a way that they're easy, easily identifiable by the specific topic that they're talking about. Um, I make sure that they're keyword optimized as well. So you might be able to sh see there that one of them is tips for leveraging YouTube. That is a keyword optimized playlist because it gives uh, YouTube the information it needs to get as many eyeballs as possible onto that playlist. So that's always a really good thing to do as well. Um, you'll also see that I like to align my playlist horizontally by doing that, I'm giving people the best visual opportunity to figure out exactly what they want to watch and what my video titles within that series are. So make sure that you're setting up playlists, make sure you're laying them out horizontally so they're easy to read and then make sure that they are keyword optimized as well. That keyword optimization of the playlist title is super important. I also like to change the order of my videos or my playlists um, from time to time. So the way that you do that is uh, once you're logged in as an administrator, you'll see at the top right of your homepage, there's a button called the customize your page button. And if you click that, uh, you'll see a little uh, options available to you that allows you to change out the playlists that appear on your home screen. And it also allows you to rearrange the order of your playlist. So if I've uploaded a video that is specifically part of my series called uh, Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus, I would want that playlist to go to the top of my homepage. But if uh, later on in the week, I do something about YouTube Your Church, then I would want my YouTube Your Church playlist to go to the top. So I hit that customize uh, playlist, customize your page button, and then I rearrange the order of the playlist on my homepage. Again, the idea is just to make it as easy as possible for people to find your content and to subscribe to your channel and playlists really make that an easy, easy option for people. So make sure you check out the uh, playlist options in your uh, uh, in, on your homepage there on YouTube. So that's uh, topic number seven is playlists of the 10 commandments of YouTube in your church. Now I wanna talk about thumbnails. Uh, before I get into that, I just wanna thank Ed Ramirez for joining us. Jeremy, it's great to see you as well. And Wayne Norris has joined us as well. He's uh, said he's watching from North Carolina and he watches about an hour a day. 
of YouTube. That's good. I want to know where everybody else, where are you watching from? Um, Jonathan, Sean, uh, Clint, Jeremy, Ed, where are you watching from and how often do you spend watching YouTube every single day? So number eight uh, of the 10 commandments, the eighth commandment is the importance of thumbnails. Now thumbnails um, are so important that I honestly believe that the right thumbnail can make or break your video. It all comes down to a thumbnail. In fact, YouTube has uh, a section in the uh, YouTube studio where it actually tracks the CTRs of your thumbnails. That's how important they are. If you don't know what a CTR is, that's the click through rate of your thumbnail. So it will put your thumbnail up as part of the analytics and it will show you how many people clicked through to watch your video based on the thumbnail alone. That's how important thumbnails are. So I like to experiment with a lot of different thumbnail options. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple right now that are, uh, happen to appear on my YouTube channel. Um, if you're watching on my YouTube channel, you can click on these videos at any time. I would love for you to do that. Now, this is a series that I've been doing called Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus. So I put the series title at the very top. And this one specifically is about the Jordan River. So the reason I put all of that information there is I wanted to make sure that there were bright, bold colors. I wanted to make sure there was a photo involved because because photos of, uh, you know, when you include a person in a thumbnail, it seems to get a lot better click through rate. And then I put the topic in white so that people understood what it was this video was about. That video is actually, it's actually a video that I recorded while I was in Israel and it's me baptizing my daughter. So, you know, I would love for you to check that one out. Um, so you, I know that sometimes you can't always use a photo uh, as part of your thumbnail. I mean, if you're at a church where you have photographers on board and, and you can get one of your photographers to take a photo of your lead pastor or your teaching pastor while they're actually doing the sermon, it's a great way to create thumbnail uh, images. But if you can't do that, sometimes you might have to use a graphic, then I would encourage you to leverage uh, Sorry, I'm just going to jump to the right one. Leverage a graphic in such a way like this one where, uh, you know, it's very clear. It's very easy to read. People know exactly what the content is about. And if you've got maybe a stock fo uh, photo of your pastor or something along those lines, you might be able to use that one as well. And, and basically the idea is to make your video stand out. When people, um, for example, we're using this uh, thumbnail as an example, if people are typing into YouTube, how do I, you know, why would I want to use YouTube? Um, my thumbnail is gonna stand out because I've done it as a simple black and white. So I always want my, uh, I always wanna understand that most people are watching uh, YouTube on their phones. And so the thumbnails are gonna be very small. So you wanna make sure you're using a good size font and make sure you're using colors that make your words, your title stand out. But I also think it's very uh, important for you to just test Test what your audience likes to see in a thumbnail. You can change the colors. You can change whether or not you have people in the thumbnail or not. You can change the fonts. Test the fonts. See what fonts people like to have as well. So make sure you're doing all of that because that's a really important way to find out what the best um, what the best thumbnails are for your specific audience. And make sure that if you're working for a church and you want uh, to, to uh, upload some message sermons, make sure that your pastor or, or leader is signing off on those as well because it's such an important part of what you do. One of the other things about thumbnails that I really love is that you have actually got the ability to backdate your thumbnail. So even videos that you have on your channel right now, you can switch out the thumbnail at any time. In fact, that's a great thing to do from time to time. Uh, if you've got some time on your hands, in, time in your schedule or time on your calendar, go back through a couple of old message series, switch out the thumbnail, change the title of the message, change it on the thumbnail, change the font you use, maybe change the colors, switch it from a person to a graphic only and see what that does to the video, track it, monitor it in the Google Analytics that you can find in your YouTube Creator Studio and then figure out what works best. If it's not working, switch it back out again or switch it back to the original one. That's one of the great things about thumbnails. So that's uh, commandment number eight is thumbnails. Commandment number nine is the about your page tag. This is an often overlooked thing when it comes to people's YouTube channels. They get everything else in place. They've got the, uh, the, the banner photo. They've got their playlist sorted out. They've got their tag sorted out. It's, it, but we can often forget about the about page. Now the about page is actually accessed through a tab on your home screen. So if you go to your uh, home screen, you'll slide across the top. You'll see that there's uh, 
home video playlist. If you've got over a thousand uh, subscribers, you get a community tab where you can post things to social media and things like that. Uh, you also have channels that you're following and watching. And then you have your about page. Now on this about page, it's super, super important that this is keyword optimized as well because this helps tell YouTube what your channel is about. Now, that, now those first uh, 100 words or so are extremely important because that's what YouTube is using to pull out your, uh, your keywords and to see what your channel is actually about. So make sure you put a lot of time into those. And then you also want to make sure that you're including all of your links to your website or other web people can find other content, maybe that's a podcast, and to your social media channels as well. This is a great place to give the call to action to help people connect with you on a deeper level simply by adding some links there. And when you add links to that about page, you'll see them down the bottom there of that screen written in blue where it says links. Uh, when you add these, these, uh, these links actually appear across your banner photo on your homepage. So it's really important that you're adding those links in the about page make sure that all the links are correct obviously as well because you don't want to be sending people to the wrong place um, and but make sure you fill out that form fill out that about page because it really helps uh, more people find your content because youtube is actually it youtube actually knows what your content is about okay so we're up to the final part the final commandment of the 10 commandments of youtubing your church before i get to number 10 i want to thank wayne for telling me he's in north carolina ed from Parsippany. It's great to see you, Ed. I'm so glad that you are here. You watch two to three hours every day. Um, that's pretty good, man. I probably am matching you about two to three hours every day. Uh, John has joined us as well. I know John is in Australia. So all the way in Australia, he's joined us. That's fantastic. Make sure you go in and say hi to John. Uh, Douglas has joined us as well. Uh, if you are just joining us, make sure you tell us where you're watching from so that we can uh, give you a shout out. And also we're trying to find out how often, how much time you spend watching YouTube every single day. Okay, so we're gonna get to commandment number 10 and commandment number 10 of the YouTube, your church, 10 commandments of YouTube is the introduction video. This is really important and it's again, so often overlooked. In fact, I was uh, doing some co consultation work this morning with a, 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 a pastor who was a leader, uh, a very influential leader. And one of the things I talked to him about was the fact, or his team about, was the fact that he did not have an introduction video to his YouTube channel. Now, the way YouTube is set up, when somebody comes to your page who is not currently subscribing to your channel, that introduction video actually starts playing automatically. That's how important it is because they get a visual and an audible representation of whatever you want to cover in your introduction video. So that's why I encourage everybody to make sure they have an introduction video. You'll see here, this just happens to be my YouTube channel. Um, I have my introduction video right there. That is a 60 second video that is really designed to just tell people what my channel is about. So when a new person arrives on my channel for the very first time, what happens is YouTube lets that play exactly uh, automatically and it's a quick introduction to what my channel is about. So you need to make sure that you have one of those on your church's YouTube channel. Now that can be somebody uh, in your church, it can be your lead pastor, whoever you think is the best person to do it, but it needs to be fun and engaging, it needs to be about 60 to maybe 90 seconds long, and it needs to let people know why they should watch your channel, why they should watch your videos. It needs to tell them what your videos, what your content is about, and it also needs to have a call to action. Now typically when it comes to YouTube, that call to action is always gonna be, make sure you subscribe to this channel to get more content on a regular basis. Um, John has said, hey, in the comment section, hey John, it's so great that you're here from Perth, uh, and Derek is watching from Ames IA. I don't actually know where IA is. Maybe you can tell me that, Derek. Where is IA? I don't think I've ever heard of that before. I hope you can tell me. Hey, we are up to the uh, section of the show. This is probably one of my favorite sections. It's the Your Questions section. I know I've covered a lot. I know that I fire hosed you with a whole bunch of information. So this is your opportunity to get into the comment section, ask me any question that you have about YouTube, uh, whether it's keywords, playlists, anything that I've covered already on today's show, you can do that. If uh, you're watching this later on, uh, I wanna let you know that I do go back through the comments and make sure that I respond to everybody. That's a key part of being on social media, being on YouTube. So I always make sure that I go back through the comments section as well. Derek tells me that AI is Iowa. 
I didn't realize that. That's the abbreviation for Iowa. Thanks, Derek. I've learned something new today. All because I asked a question. So now's your chance to ask some questions as well. If you want to do that, get into the comment section. As I said before, you can get in later on as well. And I will answer any of your questions later on if you're watching this later in the week or if you're watching this on my YouTube channel. Leave your questions in the comment section and I will make sure that I get to them. Finn, how are you doing, mate? It's good to have you here as well. Uh, has anybody got any questions about YouTube? That's the question that I have right now. I'm looking at the comment section and nobody's really saying anything and that makes it a bit awkward. Come on, somebody, please get in there. Write me a little question because um, I would love to know exactly uh, how I can help you specifically. Um, that would be incredible. While I wait for somebody to jump in, I'll just uh, uh, go to the next section. Finn's watching from the UK. Finn, it's so great to have you here. I'm really glad you're here, mate. Um, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you on YouTube. Just leave it in the comment section. But while I wait, I'm going to go and uh, let you know about the channel of the week. Every single week, I like to do a section called channel of the week where I tell you the channel that I was watching this week or the channel that caught my attention or the channel that provided some sort of information that I, I absolutely really loved. And this week, the channel of the week is actually a channel by Matt Diavella. Matt Diavella, you can see uh, already, he's uh, he has optimized his homepage very, very well. Um, he's got a very clear banner with a very clear call to action, uh, new videos every week. That's such a great thing to put on a YouTube uh, banner because it lets people know the scheduling system that you have. So I'd encourage you to follow that. And uh, his videos are all about pr productivity, minimalism, and creativity. Uh, there's so many things I love about his videos, not the least of which is that they're shot incredibly well. He uses a static camera a lot of the times. I know when you go to YouTube, one of the the main things you'll see is uh, vloggers holding their camera sort of like this. So it's got that sort of handheld uh, view. Um, but what he does is he uses a static camera with a very shallow depth of field. And so all of his shots, uh, whether he's getting out of bed or walking or whatever uh, into his kitchen, making coffee, they're all set up in such a way that it's shot from a static camera. I just really love the aesthetic of that. And the shallow depth of field means that the bokeh is very creamy in the background and he really pops out. Uh, also, his content is fantastic as well. Um, I've learned a lot about pre productivity from him, um, which is typically what he does. And minimalism, uh, he talks a lot about that as well. So make sure you get in, check that out. He's a very interesting character also. Hey, Wayne has put a question in here. So I'm gonna go back to the questions now. Wayne has said, how often do you think a church should post to YouTube? Wayne, that's a fantastic question. I would be suggesting that you definitely have to post every week. Um, and if you can, at least twice a week. So you're, you might set up a schedule where uh, your church does a message on Sunday, your pastor does a message on Sunday, that gets recorded. Maybe you upload that on a Monday. And then if you've got the ability to upload maybe a cut down version of that same message and put that out you know, maybe Thursday or something. I think that would be two great pieces of content to put up on YouTube from the one message. I like to say that you need to repurpose on purpose. So that content that you record on Sunday, which we all do, where all churches record on Sunday or most do anyway. Um, if you put that out on a Monday and then cut that down to maybe a four, five, six, minute version of the same message, just the highlights of the message and put that out on Thursday, then you've repurposed that original content on purpose. And the great thing about doing that is that shorter version will actually has the potential to get more views because the average length of a video on YouTube is four minutes and 20 seconds, whereas the average uh, length of a message on a Sunday is about 30, 35 minutes. So if you post content that is four, five, six minutes in length, that typically has the better capacity to get more views. So I would say to answer your question, question specifically, Wayne, at least once, probably twice a week if you're able to do it. Uh, Derek has written in the comments as well. He says that we double as a church and community center. We have lots of sermon videos, but also a bunch of youth sports videos. Better to keep it all together in one channel since we are dual purpose, question mark. Um, hey, you know what? I would actually suggest, Derek, that yeah, you create one YouTube channel and then you have separate playlists for the church content and for the community center content. That would be a great way to split it up while driving traffic from the community center to your church 
uh, uh, church content specifically. So by leveraging the, the community center content, you actually give people a better chance to see the church content as well. So I would uh, post them both to the one channel and just have separate playlists that are easily identifiable and keyword optimized as we just talked about. Uh, so that on, on the same home page, I think that would be the best way for you to do that. Uh, Finn has jumped in and said, how do you quickly effectively cut up a sermon into bite-sized chunks? Finn, you were listening just before. That's exactly what I was talking about is that you need to do that. But he's asking, how do you do it? Do you work with a preacher teacher to ensure that what you determine is a key point? Is there something or is something that they agree with? Hey, um, you know, probably every church would be able to do this in a different way. The way that I do it at our church um, and the way our, t uh, our team does it is that um, we, like on a Sunday when, when our uh, teaching pastor is, is preaching, I will have the script in hand and I like to go through it and highlight the bits where I think that would work. That section of the script would work out as a, uh, as a shorter, con uh, shorter version of the, the message, as a bite-sized chunk, as you put it. Um, so I like to do that on a Sunday and then I will go back through and just as I'm processing the message, as I've listened to it a couple of times, uh, as I've marked it up on the script, when I go into the editing suite on uh, Monday, it's a lot easier for me to pick out those main bits. And then I just, uh, I, I don't like, I don't hide the fact that we're cutting down the, uh, the message. So I put in, if I'm doing a large jump cut in between one section to another, I usually will put a flash in there. That's, you know, a white, a white flash because that lets people know that there's a skip of time that has just happened. I also like to leverage YouTube cards as well. So if I've done a jump cut, I'll put a YouTube card that will slide across the top of the screen and say, hey, if you wanna watch the rest of this message or the, the entirety of this message, click here. And then in the YouTube description of that cut down version, I will add a link to the uh, full length version of the message as well. So really, uh, like I said, I'm repurposing on purpose. I'm using that shorter form content to help people find the longer version of the message. And if that shorter form can be super compelling, then what's gonna happen is our views on the main content are gonna get a lot more hits as well. Um, I was getting ready to wrap up this episode, but there's been a whole bunch of questions come in. Uh, Derek, uh, awesome. Uh, we'll start to grow our channel soon. Thanks. Uh, Finn has said also, sorry, so many questions. Finn, don't ever apologize for too many questions. Other than analytics, how do you stay ahead of the curve and stay educated in upcoming trends? Well, the best thing that you can do, Finn, is to come and watch YouTube Your Church every single week. We do it live in the church communication group, uh, Facebook group at 2 p.m. Uh, Atlanta, New York time. And then I post it to my YouTube channel straight afterwards. Uh, that's youtube.com forward slash Aussie Dave Adamson. You can find it there as well. So watch content like this. And then I would be searching YouTube. There are so many YouTubers out there who are creating great content. Nick uh, Nimmin comes to mind. Sean Cannell comes to mind. There are so many out there that are creating awesome content. Sonny Lenarduzzi is another one. Um, and they're, they're providing tips and tricks to help you grow your YouTube channel. Now, a lot of them are doing that for YouTubers and YouTube creators who are doing it for side hustle or for their main business. So I would be taking that content and just running it through the filter of church. But there's a couple of ideas. I'll make sure to leave a link to some of those channels in the comment section as soon as we're done here. Uh, now he said, how do you organize all that content? Uh, sorry, in terms of algorithms, etc." I'm gonna talk about the algorithms actually next week. That's gonna form part of next week's show. So make sure you're watching that. Uh, Derek, dude, will you do a live or record a tutorial on that workflow sometime? That would be awesome. Derek, yes, I will. In fact, um, I'm planning to do that, uh, not next week, but the week after. So I'll make sure that I, I you know, provide you with all the links on how to find that later on. You can find it here in the Church Communications group, or you can find it on my YouTube channel after it has been done. Hey, there were some great questions, guys. I'm so glad you asked them. If you're watching this later on, make sure you leave your questions as well, because I'll keep going back and making sure that you get answers to your questions. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you leave your questions there as well, and then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well. So I talked about my channel of the week, which was this Matt Diavella channel. Now I want to talk about my video of the week. This is the video that caught my attention, that really helped me along the way or, or provided some sort of entertainment, uh, 
um, you know, changes up to what it might be every given week. But this week, this past week, I watched a fantastic episode uh, from the people who make the channel What's Inside. This is a father and son team who have created this incredible channel, which has like, I think last time I checked, it was like six or seven million subscribers. And they recently, it was a couple of months old now, but I only watched it in the past week. They did a video uh, about What's Inside YouTube Award headquarters. Now, if that sounds unfamiliar to you, what happens is if you get 100,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube, you get an award. If you get a million subscribers, you get a gold award. And if you get 10 million subscribers, which I think only a handful of people have done so. Casey Neistat has one, PewDiePie has one, uh, Marquise Brownlee just got one recently. You get a diamond award. And so this father and son team who have a channel all about uh, finding out what's inside certain things that they cut things apart. They actually got invited to come to this secret location somewhere in California where YouTube makes these awards. And it was just a fascinating episode. Uh, I think you would love it if you wanna watch it. I will leave a link in the comment section to or in the comment section on Facebook or in the YouTube description, which will be right down there if you're watching this on my YouTube channel. It is a great episode. You learn a lot about YouTube, but I also love watching the interaction between this father and son YouTube team. Um, they're just, they're a lot of fun to watch and, and they've obviously got such a great relationship. So I really enjoy that. I'll give you that again. It's, it's by uh, What's Inside is the channel and it was called What's Inside YouTube Award Headquarters. Okay, so now uh, we've run out of time. This is the quickest 30 minutes that you're ever gonna find online and so i want to get to what's coming up next week so next week on the show next week on youtube your church i'm going to be talking all about why you need keywords if you wanted to find out how to um how to game the algorithm on youtube keywords are your friend so i want to make sure that i cover that i'm going to cover that in a lot of detail next week so make sure you come along it's going to be all about how you keyword uh, optimize your videos, how you keyword optimize your channel, um, how you keyword optimize your playlists, everything to know about keyword optimization. I'm going to give you next week right here on YouTube, your church. So make sure you come and check that out. Well, this has been YouTube, your church. I have been your host, Dave Adamson, and I will be your host next week as well. If you've got any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section, uh, either on YouTube or on Facebook. And if you've got questions or you just maybe want prayer, I want to encourage you to text me on this number, 201-267-2156, 201-267-2156. Yes, that is my number. And if you've got any questions, I wanna make sure you send them to me and I will respond to you personally, 201-267-2156, 201-267-2156. Send me a text. Um, I'm literally, it's gonna come through to my phone and I will respond to your text. If you have any questions about YouTube, social media, or hey, you know what, if you just need prayer, if you just want prayer for yourself or for your church or for your family, send me a text. Let me know how I can pray for you because that's really the most important thing, isn't it? Well, I'm so glad that you've been watching. Continue to leave me your comments in the comment section. Um, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and share this video around on social media so that other people can get access to this content. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank our sponsors, the Church Communication Facebook group. Uh, I've been Dave Adamson and thank you for joining us on another episode of YouTube Your Church.